Hi, this is Mr. New, and welcome to another episode of Flash Professional CS5 for East Tech. In this mini lesson, we're going to be working with button symbols, and we're going to basically understand how to do interactivity with those button symbols. In this episode, it is also assumed that you have already taken the mini lesson on embedding audio. You will need to know how to import that audio into Flash already. So, we'll go ahead and get started. The button symbol timeline is actually different from the regular timeline. We're going to see that in just a moment. But what you need to understand is just about any symbol in Flash can be turned into a button symbol. I'm going to go ahead and take the eye. So if I go ahead and click on the eye and go to Modify Convert to Symbol, I want to make sure that the type is set to button. And I'm going to go ahead and name this eye button and click OK. I notice now in my library I have something called iButton and it has a new icon. That is my actual button. If I now go out to the stage and double click on that, notice my timeline now has changed. Instead of seeing frames, I have four positions, an up, over, down, and hit. The up is what that symbol looks like when no interactivity is happening. The over is when my mouse will hover over that object. The down is when I click on the mouse button. And the hit is going to be the area of which will activate that particular mouse hit. So I can have any shape or size area I want for that particular hit. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. I'm going to click on the over and hit F7, and that will give me a blank keyframe. I'm going to do another blank keyframe for down, F7 again, and F7 one more time for the hit. So I now have three blank keyframes ready to go. Okay, I'm going to place my playhead over the over, and I have already created some instances that are going to go in the place of the open eye. In fact, on the over, when I hover over the eye, I want the eye to blink closed. So, out here in my library, I have iBlink. I'm going to drag that iBlink out to the stage, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my onion skin so I can see the up instance. And now if I zoom in, I can actually line that blinking eye right on top of the open eye. I'm going to set it up right there so it'll look like it'll blink right there. And on the down, I'm also going to have the eye blink as well because the difference is I'm going to have sound effects that will sound over the blink or over the click down. So that will be the difference. So the eye will still be be blinking. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the eyelash out again and line that up perfectly with the one before. And now on the hit, I need to set up an area. I'm going to do that with a rectangle. So I will click on the rectangle tool, go to properties, make sure there is no stroke. The stroke is not going to matter anyway, so there's no sense in having it. I'm going to pick a fill color that is bright that I'm not normally using, so it'll be obvious when I see that area. So I'll pick the hot pink. And now I'm going to drag and create a rectangle right over the eye. So that will be my hit point. So every time my mouse comes within that area, the eye is going to blink. In fact, let's go ahead and pull this over to make sure. Yep, it's covering the entire eye. And now I can go ahead and actually test this. Let's go to scene one. And if I do a command return, every time my mouse comes over the eye, it blinks. Coming from the side, there we go. Okay, next thing, we're going to go ahead and embed some audio into that eye. I have a couple of sound clips I've included. Let's go back to my selection tool and double click on the eye one more time. In order to embed audio into a blink, we need extra layers. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more layers. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and name these layers. The first layer we're going to call eye blink. The second layer is going to be a boink. The third layer is going to be an ow. Is when we actually hover over, it's going. you're going to hear a boink sound. And then when we click on the mouse, it's going to actually hurt the little spider. He's going to yell out, ow. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and hit another F7. So I have a blank keyframe over my over. Go to library. And the juice heart boing is going to be my boink sound. I'll just drag that onto the stage. And what we need to do at this point, I need to select that on the timeline and go up to properties. I need to change the properties of the sync. The only way audio is going to work is if it is set to event or set to start. I'm going to go ahead and set it to event. So now that boing is going to happen. If I left that on stream, you would not hear any sound. 
So just remember that as you're setting up your sound. I'm gonna to go to the down position on the click here, hit another F7, and now if I go to library, I'm going to pick the sound of ouch, drag that out here, click on that frame, go to properties, and change this one, it's already to event, we'll leave it on event, and now let's go ahead and test our animation. And now when I click, And there we have it. We have our animation of our spider. And that is how to add button interactivity with Flash Professional CS5. I would like to see you try to add some button interactivity to your last Bone Tool project. That will be for extra credit. So adding button interactivity for extra credit in FL09. Have fun with this and we'll catch you on the next lesson.